where I'm going in is real popular. So I've, I've headed in on Thursday at lunchtime, try and beat the, the rush. Um, I think this weather's kept a lot of people out of the bush, so hopefully uh, the deer haven't been harassed for a little bit. Even though this is a very hunted, very popular hunting spot. I'm the only one at the car park. So, going in for four nights. This weather should break tonight, tomorrow morning. And hopefully the deer have been hunkered down. We've had a fair bit of rain, a couple inches up in the high country. So hopefully they've been hunkered down. They've got this wind over the heads at the moment, so should be in the thicker gullies hiding. Come the break in the weather, I'll be there ready to go and hopefully they'll be out on the sunny faces. And the clearings feeding up. Um, yeah, that's the plan anyway. Right, oh. So, obviously, I've finished up work, pocket full of money. I bought a bit of new gear, new pack. It's called a Hyperlite Southwest 3400. So, it's a 55 litre pack. I, mean, uh, I don't think it's, it's not 50 litres waterproof. The main compartment's fully waterproof, and I reckon it's maybe 35, 40 litres maybe in the back pocket. That gets it up to 55, I think, and that's how they work it. Um, I've got a bit of other ultralight gear that I'm testing out, because basically my knees can't handle the big weights anymore. So this pack with four kilos of food and four litres of water is running right around three and a half, uh, 13 and a half kilos, 14 kilos with, you know, four days, four nights worth of food um, and all my sleeping gear and cooking gear. Now I could get the weight down on the food, but I am running on water up here. There's no reliable water up here. So the food I'm using, which I'll show you later, only requires 30 ml of water per meal. Whereas the air or freeze dried stuff, which is half the weight of the stuff I'm using. You know, you, read, you, nearly, you really need about 300 ml of water. So a fair bit more water. All right, we'll see how it goes. So, with the last video, I've had heaps of views. Tons. Really good. But not all that many subscribed. And I think the reason is, purposefully, last video I didn't push the subscribe, you know. Didn't push you guys to hit that button. The video before hasn't had nearly as many views, but it's had, you know, three, four times more subscribers and I think it's because I just reminded you guys you got to help me out to uh, you know keep things rolling so what I want you to do now is press pause and subscribe I know there's still 75 or 80 percent of you guys watching this video that aren't subscribed I'd like to get that number right down and make it make it better for everybody um, so why do I want more subscribers so when I see how many views a video's got, that tells me people are interested in that video. But when you hit the subscribe button, it tells me that you are interested in me making more videos. So the more subscribers I have, the more uh, motivated I am to do what I'm doing now. You know, I should probably be sneaking through here, but not. I'm talking. I'm talking loud so you can hear me. Um, so yeah, hit that subscribe button, help me out. I'm nearly at 2,000 uh, subscribers, I'd like to see it up around five or 10,000. Um, and then I might start pushing um, a few companies to help me out with some gear. Uh, ultimately, that's me. My goal is I don't want to run ads and make money off, off YouTube. I want to just push companies to say, hey, here's some boots, try these out. Or, you know, here's some new binoculars, give these a go, tell me what you think. That's that's what I want to do. And that way you guys get to see, you know, the gear as well. And get an honest opinion on how good it is. So, subscribe. Right, oh, I've just spent the last hour bush bashing, crashing. Trying to take it easy as I can so I don't fall over. But it's pretty thick blanket wood and wattle country come off the main ridge there 
I've cut down in some country that I believe isn't getting a lot of attention compared to where everyone's boot marks are headed to. So that's why I've gone ultra light. That's why I've got water because I'm up high though it seems as though I'm going to be able to get water out of this little creek. But this is where you just run into big deer. And um, that's what I'm after. The adventure. The chance of seeing that big fella. But, you know, just getting out here and trying to do things a little bit different to what the crowd's doing. So the crowd's going along the ridge to the bluffs, to the open country. I've dropped off the side into the thick. I'm still going to get nice open bluff country down here. But it's just a lot harder to get to. So, anyway, I will say that this Hyperlight backpack, I thought it was going to be too noisy because it's uh, made out of this uh, material that's pretty crackly. And, but I'll tell you what, it's tucked in on my back so tight, it's not really rubbing on any of the bushes. Um, and its profile's low, so when I'm ducking under stuff, it's not catching. Um, I'm super impressed. The harness is not nearly as good as my Osprey, but at less than less than half the weight of the Osprey. Uh, and this is probably running a bit too heavy for this pack. I need to. This is designed just for you know real light, you know, one or two night sort of things. So I'm sort of pushing it because it's new for four days. Um, so I'd cut down a couple of kilos in food and if I didn't have to get water another couple, you know, four kilos. So I could be six kilos lighter. So I'd be down around, I'd be under 10 anyway. That's obviously not including the gun on me by nose, but that's just all me camp gear and all the rest of it. Anyway, let's get out and get some more open stuff and give you a look around. Righto, so there's camp for the night. Just just out of the wind, hopefully the wind stays the same direction and doesn't come flogging around the side. If it does, I'll have to think of something else. But it's the best I've got at the moment. So, it's about 3.30, I'm going to just have a rest, give me a couple of hours and then we've got some really good uh, glassing just around the corner, down over the side and obviously across over here. So hopefully <laughs> the wind dies off a bit later in the evening and we can get some deer moving. These couple of hinds are straight across from camp. I'm actually st still sitting on the edge of my fly. I've just been trying to warm myself up a bit and stay out of this wind. And I'm like, what are they across there? And they were out in the open when I first spotted them. Didn't even look through the binoculars to see them once. <laughs> it's only about 4.30. About 10 to 6, the rain coming through again. It's bloody freezing in this wind, so I'm guessing they're cold and hungry. This is a young stag. I can only just make out his antlers, he's a bit too far away.
I'd do a few mods on the old fly. Stop the rain coming right in. Anyway. Uncle Ben's rice, golden vegetable, 30 ml of water. And you basically just stir it until it's warm. So because I'm up high and I haven't got a lot of water, these are the go. Once it's warm, I'll run one of them through it. And then I'll put it in one of them. Yeah, that could be a problem. Hopefully he's a loner. <laughs> oh shit, he's not. I'm there. Might be in a bit of trouble here. Oh no, boy, now get this shit sorted. I've pretty much had 10 45 minute snoozes. Getting up, or well not getting up, but waking up, checking with the torch to see how many bull ants were coming to get me. I stopped counting at 20, and then I made a peace offering with them. I crunched up some cashew nuts and almonds and walnuts and put it down where I think they were coming out. <laughs> Seemed to have slowed them down, I only killed a couple more after that. Uh, blew its ass out all night, rained all night. Um, it's still sprinkling a little bit now, but the wind's died right off. So, should be in good good uh, morning for glassing. So, it's gonna, I've packed up camp. It's where we stayed last night. Got a bit of a stiff back this morning. Now you get that. Anyway, let's see how we go. Sneak around the side here. Start doing some serious glassing. I'm not in any hurry, I'm only probably moving. 500 metres today, setting up another camp on the next ridge basically. Heaps of good glassing across here. Perfect. Let's get into it. Well, I've been glassing all morning and I haven't picked up a single deer yet. It's freezing cold, had a uh, wind change just a minute ago. It's a bit like a south easterly. <laughs> It nearly cut me in half sitting in the wind, so I've moved. I'm moving around a bit, trying to find a spot to camp. I want to get through this here, but I'll show you. I'm right in amongst the bluffs now, and you just you've got to be safe in this sort of country, especially on your own. Doesn't really matter if someone's here to help you. If you go over there, you you're pretty much buggered. But so heightened senses when you sort of. Cruising through here, these rocks are slippery, they're loose, stand on a stick in the wrong spot, and away you go. Uh, pretty sure I can get through there, cut around, there's a real narrow bench there that cuts around to this cave that I've seen about. 10 years ago. I'm hoping to get there again to show you all you guys because it was pretty cool from memory. Anyway, it's been glassing out down there but nothing. They're there, I just can't see them. Another good thing about this Hyperlite pack is when you haven't got all your gear in it, it comes down pretty small. So you don't have to carry a day pack as well. And it seems to have enough pockets and storage for you know everything you need to carry. I like that the main compartment's fully waterproof.
Yeah, so I've just come back to camp. And I went around the corner a bit and glassed up into where I videoed that stag last night, but I couldn't spot him again. Um, and then I went a bit further around through another gully and got him back. He's killing me. So I was sort of stumbling around a bit. So it's, I don't know. It's affecting me. Anyway, I come in on some old stag sign and thought, oh, I think good chance of running into one, hindsight. Thought I heard something. Took a couple more steps, looked up just in time to see it 30 metres away running off. Didn't even get the gun on it. I saw a bit of antler, big body. Don't think it was a real big stag, but um, had a bloody good foot. Anyway, I've just come back. Had a bit of a cook up, two minute noodles and a cup of soup. Had a bit of a kip for a little bit, charged up my phone. I think I'm going to stay here for the night and I'm just going to glass all this. So I didn't pick up a single animal off this this morning. They've got to be in there, but it's a great spot for long bombers. Pretty easy to see them if they're there. Maybe they're all dead. <laughs> the deer that I did see the other night were way, way up high, so maybe there's been a heap of hunting pressure, or whether that weather's pushed them up into those thickest gullies, I don't know. I'll well, give it one more chance here, the Savo, and if it doesn't work out tomorrow morning, I'll hunt, hike around there and set up another camp a bit further around. Those hinds the other night were right about there so pretty high you know you think if i go in on a thursday i'll have the place to myself for a little bit and you'd think parking your vehicle there might spook a few people off but i've been cruising around here i just heard a honk you know, an hour or so ago i think i did cut around that deer that I saw this morning, these guys, or this person has pushed them around to me, I reckon, because I basically backtracked them all the way to where he's come through and I picked up his boot marks. Anyway, he's down in there. Nice little tent. So he's got a drum there, so he must come here pretty regular. Well, I don't see much point in staying in here, especially with the other hunters here. I might move around the corner. I'm camp up here tonight, but might hunt around the corner on the way home. But I'm not seeing the deer, so I don't know. Look at that rough weather has just pushed them right back and they haven't come out yet. It's prime time. I've uh, glassed up behind on the other side. It's up pretty high. So maybe the deer are a lot higher. Maybe some of them have gone to the tops already. Anyway. I'm basically sitting on where that stag was last night in the video. But he's not here. Pretty sure it was him I bumped into earlier in the day because a lot of the sign on that bench was heading down and around into where I bumped him. So looks like he was on hot on the heels of a hind, so I could smell him. So he's rutting a little bit, but I can't even find a hind to watch to see if a stag will come out. Look at this country.
anyone that's been in here will know exactly where I'm sitting. I don't know, Camp 2.0 on top of the world here. About to sneak over the side here and have a bit of a glass around. See if I can spot an animal for the morning. That's me old camp. So, we've got hunters on the ridge I'm on. We've got hunters down there with a big fire going. No wonder I can't find a deer. Easier to find a hunter than it is to find a deer. Anyway, I turned up eight deer. Two lots of three and then two singles. Didn't see any bone. Um, three were down low in a huntable spot. But they were super cautious. They only come out just before dark. Or, you know, just, it's not quite dark yet, but it's, you know, pretty much too, too dark to hunt. Three are up super high. And the other two, uh, sort of, I think they're together, but they're a little bit apart. Um, and another spot that I've, you know, I've seen to you before. But, yeah, they're not uh, cruising around where they're going to get shot real easy. Uh, I'll see what I can turn up in the morning. It might be just starting to pop out of the thicker bush, but I dare say they just got tons of hunt, tons of hunting pressure. So I'm just gonna have to work harder for them. Anyway, I'm gonna have a cook up, give them a sleeping bag or something. Frozen. You know those guys out there that are thinking about doing backpacking, and you might be packing into a spot where you don't know where there's water. Well, there isn't any water. Got a couple of hot tips for you. First tip is carry water in two separate containers. That way, if one busts or leaks, you've still got one left. So, the other tip is don't leave your camel pack in your backpack and then use your backpack as a pillow because sometimes during the night I must have landed on the bite valve and I drained out about a litre of water. <laughs> so I've just transferred my water over into my camel pack. I've still got 1.2 litres, but that's only enough to sort of muck around today and get out. So I'm going to pack up camp and head out today. I've had a glass over on the bluffs this morning and across the river. haven't picked up anything, but... Um, the moon came up about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, so I don't know whether that's put them to bed early. I don't know, well, the hunting pressure is putting them in the bush. Anyway, this is uh, what I carry for the spare water, it's 3 litres, it's got the measurements on the side so you sort of can tell what, uh, what you got left, and it packs away to nothing, sort of see that. And obviously 3 litre camel pack goes in your backpack so I can have a sip along the way. Another thing I do when uh, I'm doing these, you know, I'm sort of hiking and hunting at the same time. I don't have a specific spot where I'm going to camp, it's sort of just where I end up or where the deer sign is. I generally have an idea where I want to go, but you know, like this one was definitely out of the hat. So a lot of the time I'm right where the deer are probably going to be, so I don't light fire. So I've been seeing a lot where people are hiking in, you know, National Park. We're pretty lucky here, we can shoot as many deer as we like, we don't have any restrictions. And people leave rubbish in the bush, and it shits me up the wall. There's my rubbish for two days hiking. Do I stash it under a rock or do I just carry it out? What's that way? A couple hundred grams? 
I shoot a deer, I'm happy to carry five kilos of extra bone and skull out. So I'm happy to carry out my rubbish. I don't need to light a fire and half burn it. Stick it in your pack, boys. It's not that hard. I didn't pick up a single deer again this morning, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but I've got a feeling it could be something to do with the moon coming up. You know, just before sunrise, sort of makes them go. Oh, sun's coming and slip into the bush. I didn't see, you know. Normally pick up the odd easy one out in the open, but no, nothing. I use these hiking poles to set up my tarp. But I also use them for hiking in and hiking out where I don't think I've really got much of a chance of shooting a deer. And they just make life so much easier. I used to think, nah, that'd be a pain in the butt. But once you start getting used to using them, and you sort of have to work out a bit of a technique. They're real handy. They stop you tripping over. They save your legs. Take the weight off your back a bit. And when you're sort of going uphill... And really sort of it actually allows you to go a little bit further each time um, so I recommend them right oh that's the end of this one end up seeing about 13 I think only the ones well I saw two stags but I'm pretty sure it was the same one um, yeah there's still deer in there they're a lot harder to find than they usually are well I haven't hunted in here this year, so last year we sort of seemed to find them a bit easier, but we did hunt a bit earlier in the year too. So I don't know whether that's got something to do with it. There's a lot of hunting pressure in there. It's putting me right off. Well, this pad I'm walking out on is like a full-blown walking track. You could seriously walk in here in the dark with a headlamp. You could follow this track that easy. And it's just hunters. It's not a marked walking track or anything. Anyway, if you've watched till now, I hope you subscribed. Give me a comment. Cheers for watching.